Okay, uh, so we got a new one, actual art degree. Temporarily, we're gonna get minus one to perception. It's only an hour and a half. Yeah, it's another copper type, the worst one, the most savage and brutal. We'll read this when we uh, decide to, to do it. We're like a little ways away there. So if she's saying try to get in through this door, like this is just not happening. And this person up here, oh, I didn't know we could just talk. Okay, we should have tried this before because uh, this person was saying like, hey, Coppa, over here. Uh, I think we came here at night or something. You see a young man on a balcony nursing a cigarette. His eyes have been following you for a while. Not looking for any trouble, officer. Sounds very American. Despite the cold, his shirt hangs unbuttoned on his frame. It's the voice of someone who has something to hide, my liege. Uh, yeah, no trouble from me. I just want to know what's going on here. I don't want to be seen talking to the gendarmerie, if that's okay. I just want to finish my cigarette. That right? Can you let me inside? Don't let him go. This could be your witness. The balcony has a great view of the whole thing. Exactly. Uh, actually, the gendarmerie really needs to talk to you. Is it really that important? Uh, yeah. Like a nervous cat, he keeps stealing looks at the neighboring windows. All right, but make it quick. Once I finish this cigarette, I have to run. All right, well, uh, can we start with your name? My name, my name is Martin Martinez. Bullshit. That's definitely not his real name. You're not actually called Martin Martinez, are you? No, of course not. Could you please lower your voice? He scans the courtyard. It's silent like the bottom of a well. Every sound captured and reflected back. Well, it looks like you got a good view of the Whirlin's backyard. Can you tell me anything about the hanging? I can tell that you finally got him down. Thank you. It was quite a disturbing sight, even by Martinez standards. And uh, what were you doing last Sunday? Oh, you already asked me that, didn't you? Wait, is someone else investigating the lynching? Uh, Kim, uh, did you? No, not you two. Some more muscular type. Oh, uh, measure head? Lieutenant takes out his little notebook and writes something down. And, uh, when did you speak to this more muscular gentleman? Uh, last week? I don't know. I don't know. Look, he looks around the courtyard again. Snow blankets, the old patio chairs, and dead house plants, and all the neighboring windows are black. A downy blanket of white to cover up the miserable poverty of the scene. Uh, you didn't answer the question. What were you doing last Sunday? Uh, I had friends over. What kind of a friend? Who was my Sunday friend? What's your friend's real name? Did he see something? He doesn't reply, gesturing no with his cigarette. In the neighboring windows, you can see faint reflections of his silhouette from all angles. All right, we'll talk later then. No, we won't. He takes one last drag of his cigarette before stubbing it on the balcony. Now, if you'll excuse me, I really need to get going. Let's convince him to stay. Come on, 72, baby, and... Mm! This isn't the time or place for questions. Who knows who might be watching from the distance, hidden in the shadows. Hey, listen, uh, I'm just trying to make things okay again. Can we meet somewhere else? For a moment, the man on the balcony seems almost vulnerable. Something moves in the depths of his feline eyes. Compassion and a hint of understanding. When he speaks again, his voice is soft and deliberate. I'm sorry, I, I really don't have the information you're looking for. With a flick of the wrist, he sends the cigarette butt sailing over the rail. But hold on, what's that? For a split second, his hand lingers as though gesturing towards a stone placed right next to the front door. It's a sign. Good luck with the investigation, he walks away. What's he getting at here? Is that a dick on the door? He's talking about the dick on the door? He's gone. We should run after him, see where he went. No point in running. Tenements like these often have multiple exits. If he doesn't want to talk to us, then he'll know how to hide himself. Yeah, so what, we just give up? He could be a witness, him or his Sunday friend. Either way, we need to look into that muscular type who's asking about our case. He did leave us a sign. Did you see that? He wanted to draw our attention to the stone right over there. Okay. This stone here, maybe. Oh, probably a key that unlocks this door. Lieutenant nods towards a small rock and a soggy patch of grass. 
If we can find a way inside the building, we can ask around for his apartment. Yeah, okay, great, let's do that. Cool. Okay. Stone like any other, maybe there's something under it? Boom. This must be for the front door. Pity it doesn't have apartment numbers on it. This building has many apartments and the man can be in any of them. Well, how are you ever going to find the right one? We'll just have to go in and see. Sick. All right. Check every damn apartment. Okay, find the armored gloves. Fishing village down the coast. Who knows something about the armored gloves? And I'm guessing that's like here. Fisherman sacks. Shacks, right? But that doesn't open until Wednesday when this thing is, is open. Uh, map wall. We could do cafeteria window. Pile of Eternite. Or Eternite. Warded door. Joyce. All right. Let's begin. Eviction notices and missing pets are plastered on top of each other. Hello. Flip up glasses. The auditor. Extra logic at less authority. Our authority is in the dumps anyway. Well, it is if we carry that ledger. Our current glasses are visual calculus, which is already insanely strong. Uh, less drama. So let's go... Let's boost logic. Visual calculus at 6. Logic at 5. Because this is taking a hit somewhere as well from thoughts. Cool. Box is filled with cleaning chemicals. Smells of laundry detergent. Old shoe rack. Shoes come in three different sizes. Hmm. Head out to the balcony here. Hmm, okay. This is probably for cigarette butts. And money! Breaker box full of cigarette butts. Okay, that's where he puts them. Not sure if that's good or bad. Probably bad. Someone's growing rosemary thyme in a cactus. Just a door, nothing for you here right now. What is this? Money! All right, good. This is a door to apartment number 30. Voices from within singing along to some buoyant dance track. 29. Complete silence. Whoever lives here isn't home. 28. A door to be remembered. What the? Okay. 28 is to be remembered. 29 is silence and 30 people are singing. Apartment 12, loud rumbling snore comes from within. This one's just open. Hello. Alcohol, Commodore Red, and this is our jam too. Extra physique, minus morale. Oh my god, are we gonna dip back into that world? We also, this would, this would finish off, uh, find booze and drink it. I don't really have a need for physique right now, but um, you know what? Let's party. Large crimson bottle of cheap sugary wine made of poverty, <laughs> sugar, artificial taste enhancers, and a vague memory of grapes guaranteed to color your lips. Um, morale, 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 morale. Where is that? Am I blind? Oh, wait. No, I, it's this. It's going to damage us if we drink it. That's what it means. It's fine. Well, hello. Someone seems to have found himself a bottle of alcohol. Here's where the magic happens. Light reflects off the green glass of the Commodore Red. The gods have been generous, 
better pop it open before they change their minds. Wow, the gods of mass production have made this alcohol container laughably easy to open. Child could have done it. Let's do it. There's a satisfying pop as the cork jumps out, and the hair on your back raises like an army at attention. You've been here before. Welcome back, detective. You're home now. You know, what will be the repercussions if I take that sip? Nothing, some mental stuff, nothing to be worried about. Physically, but as strong as an ox. Oh, I'm doing it. Zeke raised, all right. Uh, a golden sun melts down your throat. It's rays filling your nostrils with sunshine. Your stomach uh, melts from it into a happy, gooey mess. So does your mind. All the bad things are melting. You're... You're you again, a real cop, a real detective, incredibly well done. All right, in the bottom right of the corner, there's a drink button. Gives plus one to physique skills, physical instrument, half light, electrochemistry, endurance, pain, whatever. This is good before rolling a white check, but damages your morale. And remember, from the void we, re we came, into the void we must return. All right. 58 minutes left. Shower curtains are covered in some sort of slime. Let's uh, carry the flashlight here. Just in case we stumble on anything in these dark areas. Someone's drawn a five-pointed star on the wall. This isn't just a five-pointed star. It's an inverted white pentagram cradled in a wreath of antlers. The iconography of communism, in other words. Hey, look out, Kim. There's communists around here. I'll keep my armistice handy, detective. <laughs> he doesn't actually reach for his gun. Let's inspect the symbol. The star in antlers was developed in six decades of the last century, quickly adopted by Mazov and the communards during the revolution. Even today, half a century after, the star and antlers retain the ability to evoke hope, disappointment, and fear in equal measure. And what does it evoke in me? Smug superiority. Aesthetic musings, the triumph of capital is undeniable, but maybe the guns were sort of cool? Revolutionaries had loads of guns. Thank you. Padlock door number 11. Let's examine the padlock. A solid lump of metal, but the shackle is deeply corroded. A solid pair of chain cutters would make short work of it. Better about those cutters. You won't get very far otherwise. Use the chain cutters. Minus 10 because it's not in hand. Okay. Uh, we should probably knock to see if uh, someone's home. Going in. 58 only. Uh, these are interfacing gloves. Oh. What are you doing? You're trying to cut the body of the lock with the chain cutter. It's not really working. My God. I believe it's the shackle you're meant to cut, detective. Oh my, this is embarrassing. Uh, don't you think that's what I'm trying to do? Perhaps you should give it another go. Kim pointed out the shackle. Come on. There we go. The shackle snaps like a twig and the lock falls to the floor with a little thud. It should be possible to enter now. After you, detective. Thanks, Kim. Good little chunk of cash in here. Nine millimeter bullet. And a Samari Sarah Marizian lounge jacket. Extra conceptualization if we want it. Esprit de Corps and Shivers. Shivers is already getting a boost. Esprit de Corps is uh, at four. Um, Shivers is up to seven. We could remove this from the jacket, I think. This is because of the, uh, that huge boost that we got from uh, the Thoughts. Classic white summer jacket loved by the Sarah Marizian Communist Party and the accompanying subtropical drug traffickers. Fits you well, regardless of your political ambitions. Let's go with... Uh, Conceptualization, then. Yeah, nice. We look awesome. Up to eight. Books of critical theory on the monstrosities of capital and such. Right up our alley, obviously. Photos of revolutionaries posing with guns. Flamboyant poster of a white star. Real lithography. And some weird statue head. Bust of Krasmazov. 
Plaster cast bust depicts a middle-aged man with impressive sideburns. The name on the plinth reads Kras Mazov. Honestly, he does kind of look like you after all. Yeah, somebody told us that before, right? Uh, Kim, you gotta admit, uh, Kras Mazov bears a striking resemblance to me. Uh, hold on a second. Is that why you broke in here? To find out whether you're Krav, Krav Mazov? Well, uh, well, no, it's purely coincidental. Sure it is. Uh, just humor me for a moment. Don't you see the resemblance? Well, you do both seem to have an affinity for sideburns, but seems like Old Cross here didn't drink nearly as much as you. Well, maybe this just shows him before he started drinking. Very well. The lieutenant leans closer to the sculpture. Let's look for identifying features then. Pulls a finger on the pale, puts a finger on the pale dot embellishing the bust cheekbone. Doesn't he have a birthmark right here? What about you? I definitely can't see my face, so I can't tell. All right, but here's the big thing. Krasmazov looks Samarin and you don't. You're right. That's something we definitely don't have in common. Uh, good, so you're not him. I might not look like him, but I know in my heart, Krasmazov, yeah, that's me. Lucian <laughs> closes his eyes. Okay, you win. Be Krasmazov then. I don't care. His eyes open again, tilting his head in a quiet wonder. Why are you so hellbent on proving that you're Krasmazov anyway? <laughs> uh, well, because he, honestly, he was a total gangster and a bank robber who went for all the cash in the world. And that's, that's who I want to be. Oh, nice. Thought gain, suicide of Krasmazov. Uh, I think you have misunderstood who he was, but if you say so. Hmm, whoever lives here needs to learn how the economy actually works. I suspect that's exactly what they're trying to do. He leans in closer to inspect the economics book on the table. There aren't many communists around, not after the revolution. Some youth still keep the ideology going, it seems. Okay. Well, uh, we could learn this. Actual art degree came up as well. Revolutionaries love to pose with their guns. Yes. More money. There's the sweeping lady. You hear someone walking around inside. The number on the panel says 10. Walking stops abruptly, but no one comes to the door. You can feel tension. Let's knock again. This time the steps come closer. Who is this? Demands a female voice, wary and tense. Ah, this is the police. Open up. Do I have to open the door? You hear the clacking of heels again. The other side walks right up to the door. Her tone is now getting a defensive edge. Do you have a warrant? I'm not obliged to open the door if you don't have a warrant. Let's go. We don't have reason to get inside that department. It's generally easier to do things if you literally have any reason. Yes, thank you, Logic. Postcard, Boogie Street 46. Crumpled up postcard depicts an open air market in Boogie Street five years ago. A vendor smiles as dead roosters line his stalls, hung by their own feet from canopy. Red blood flows onto the muddy street. Bur blurry shadows of people pass. Door nine is locked. Mailbox is overflowing. Fido says a firing squad for the rich. Give me a moment. Elderly woman is leaning on her broom, her knuckles white as bone. She seems to have some difficulty breathing. The cold never does any good for my bronchitis. Oh, no. <laughs> well, I, I promise, ma'am, this won't take long. I only have a few questions. Go ahead, then. What do you want to know, policeman? She's the cleaning lady. She knows the floor plan in the residence. Yeah, uh, I'm looking for a young male in his mid-twenties, uh, dark hair, skinny build, and a smoker on the balcony. Yes, yes, I know who you mean. The scrawny boy who's always smoking like the devil, right? She looks at the other end of the hallway. Somewhere in the building, a child starts crying. You hear radio turn to a talk show and someone taking a shower. Uh, what's he in trouble for? Uh, uh, no trouble. I just want to talk to him. Do you know where he lives? Talk! The cleaning lady starts laughing, but it turned into a violent coughing spasm. She squeezes her broom, trying to catch her breath. What was so funny about that? He lives upstairs in room 28. Go to the balcony. It's one of the doors there. She points east. He's usually home in the evening. 
Uh, oh, 28 was the door we need to remember. <laughs> All right. Uh, we should check out his apartment on the balcony, see if he's home. All right. And uh, who are you anyway? I'm no one, just an old woman who cleans these hallways. And do you live here? If you can call it living, I have a little room upstairs right next to the coal room. It's barely bigger than a closet, but I don't complain. I have my bed and my aching bones to keep me company, and that's all I need from this world. And she, all she gets to, the coastal wind beats down hard on the coal room door outside. Splashes of waves make the balcony slippery. She hasn't spoken to anyone for a while, even her sentences are rusty. All right, well, uh, I think we're good. We don't need to bother you. So this would be the exit. This goes out to another balcony. This is blocked with something. Oh, we could probably get in through here. See where this balcony leads? Oh, this will be up where the, the painter girl was. Yep. See if she has anything different to say when we're up here. Oh, yeah. The piggies have learned how to saunter up <laughs> staircases. I didn't think you could do that with hooves. Now yeah. you're in trouble now, little lady. Yes, Uncle Maynard. Huge trouble. You're going to take out your metal detector and your collection of bottle caps and shrapnel. Uh, maybe. That smell coming from her paint bucket is not paint, it's heavy fuel oil. Hey, uh, is that heavy fuel oil? He studies the contents of Cindy's bucket. Red dyed heavy fuel oil intended for exclusive use in government vehicles, to be precise. And what did you think I was using? Aqua Rals? Sucked it into the cop's fuel tank myself back in Jamrock. Oh, you better hand it over. Or what? You'll push me off this ledge and pry the bucket from my dead hands? Whatever. Whatever. Lock is rusty, you can't get in. Chair's new, someone lives back here. What? Um... What about... Bolt cutters? Above, tarps flap in the wind, forgotten hammers, nails, and rust. No, nothing. Where does this go, then? It's a different section entirely? Uh, sort of. Someone sleeps in here. Recently. Cindy? The girl outside, maybe? Enough cold to last for several winters. Smells of chemicals. Hello. Electrochemistry, but less reaction speed. Oh, these look so great. These look so good. Jean shorts. Oh, they're full jeans. Never mind. Although these jeans look worn, the wearer must have had an ass given to them by the mighty lord himself. That beautiful peach-shaped man-ass has imprinted itself so deep in the fabric, you can't but wonder if wearing them would start molding your own vague rear side into a more shapely form as well. <laughs> Let's take the boost to electrochemistry because of god-ass. The these pants... It's electrochemistry anyway, so we're, we're trading savoir faire for reaction speed. I'm cool with it. And we're like, this is weird, but we kind of are starting to look normal. Interfacing. These pockets of these new jeans are perfect for sticking your hand into. Makes you look cool, calm, and collected. As your hand enters the pocket, your fingers brush against something soft yet crinkly. Let's see what that is. Apricot chewing gum wrapper. Hey, it's a chewing gum wrapper. It reminds you of a fruity juice of apricots. You should inspect it closer if you have time. Something about the wrapper's texture is, unf is familiar. By the way, the raw materials were most likely exported from Seagay and processed in Sir Le Clef onto apricot-flavored chewing gum loved by kids of today and yesterday. Hmm, something about it is familiar. And not only to your fingers. Huh. Okay. A gleaming chewing gum wrapper found in the pocket of the laborer jeans. It gives off an ever so faint scent of apricots. Your mouth starts watering. There it is again. The scent of apricots with a touch of cinnamon smells like the end of some distant summer, the surface of another planet, or some ancient temple. Let's take a deep, deep breath. Bitter, citrus, sweet. It seems to grow stronger like a glow with every breath you take. Whatever petrochemical byproducts they use to create this artificial flavor have bonded tightly to the wrapper. Or is that just your memory filling the gaps? Okay. 
Apricot chewing gum, scented one. This is probably a personal one then. Until a blossom of skin and flower petals erupts in behind your closed eyes made of toffee, cream, and distance, you just had to take the dive. Feels so familiar. What was that about end of summer? The sun sets in the sea, but the water does not boil. Instead, it turns to liquid gold. For a moment, the world's store of precious metal seems to increase dramatically, and you are rich. There's a movement next to you. The shuffle of a small coat, warm like the evening. But when you turn towards it, there's nothing. Wait, where did it go? Why are you talking to a gum wrapper? What about the ancient temple? Yes, from the height of antiquity, a long, long time ago, millennia ago, on the island of time you can never return to. Weird. And what's this? Money. Well, I wonder why that one's purple. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, let's head back into the other part of the building and look for that guy. Uh, we still have to report back to Everard. There's a bunch of stuff we need to do. What time of day is it here? It's, uh, it's almost... almost four o'clock. It's crazy. Okay. So we're going to head back through here, likely go through here to get behind this door, and then we have to go to that special door on the outside of the patio, so... Wish me luck! Only warm primordial blackness. Your conscious for men sinny. No larger than a single grain of malt. You don't have to do anything anymore. Ever. Never. Ever. 